Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, saying together, O oh God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the book of Acts. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be God. We'll read Psalm 23 in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from Revelation. I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. You are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord Christ. Christ. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Judeans gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe. Because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, who created us and loves us. Amen. Amen. I don't think that these Judeans in the portico of Solomon were the first to want to shake Jesus and say, Just tell us plainly, who are you? Jesus always spoke in parables and gave people plenty of room to figure things out for themselves. And I know even among us here today, we often prefer to find things out factually. Just tell me the truth. And yet there's some gift in what Jesus offers by not coming straight out and saying, I am the Messiah. Hadn't you known that already? He leaves it open for people to decide. Much like God's love is always available to us, yet we are the ones who get to choose whether to live in that love or to push it away. Jesus said, I have shown you all my works, but you don't believe because you're not of my sheepfold. The worst thing you can ever say to somebody is that they don't belong. In fact, if we know that God created everything, then we all belong, don't we? There's nothing that God can do for us to be separate from God, but guess what? We're the ones who have that power. And like these Judeans in the temple, sometimes we push God away and don't want any part of it. Jesus offers to us the gift of his presence and his love but we are the ones who need to embrace that. In a sermon on this topic that I read this week, a preacher named Debbie Thomas talks about this very idea that we don't necessarily learn 
just by hearing something, but we learn it by doing. Here's what Debbie Thomas wrote. According to this text, whatever belief I arrive at in this life will not come from the ups and downs of my own emotional life. It will not come from a creed, a doctrine, or a cleverly worded sermon. Rather, it will come from the daily, hourly business of belonging to Jesus' flock, of walking in the footsteps of the shepherd, of living in the company of fellow sheep, and listening in real time for the voice of the one whose classroom is rocky hills, hidden pastures, and deeply shadowed valleys. If I won't follow him into those layered places, places of both tranquility and treachery, trust and doubt, I will never belong to him at all. And so when I talk about those Judeans in the portico of Solomon being like us who at times push God away. I know it says Jews in your text, and I chose the words Judeans on purpose because the people who had followed Jesus from Galilee are also Jews, but they're Galilean Jews. And Jesus was making a point that they had left everything. They had left their homes and their work behind, remember? Peter and James and John dropped their nets and followed Jesus. They've been walking through those complicated places with him already. And here he is talking to the Judeans in their comfy temple where they come to pray. They haven't given up anything to follow him. They just want to intellectualize whether he is the Messiah or not, but they don't want to live that reality. It's in living that reality that we come to know the God who loves us. Now you often hear preachers complain about how the Sunday lessons don't always fit together. And you might even have felt that this morning, but I would make a different argument. I think that the lessons this morning are very much connected to this idea of knowing something up here in your head versus knowing something in your heart. We have this lesson at the beginning about Tabitha or Dorcas, whose name actually, if it were English, would be Gazelle. And Dorcas has died, but she had been a creator of beautiful fabrics and clothing, and they bring to Peter all these beautiful things she's made, but it's just not the same, seeing the product of her labors versus being in her presence. And he says, Tab Tab I can't even say it, Tabitha, <laughs> arise. And he presents to them this living person. And it's so different from just looking at the clothing she had made. They're finally in her physical presence. Or think about this passage from Revelation where people who have followed Jesus on earth and have washed their robes in the blood of the martyrs are now in God's presence and they're shouting with joy because seeing God face to face is so much better than just hearing about God on earth. And then think about our Psalm 23, and maybe you've noticed this before, but this is the first time it jumped out at me. The first few verses are all about God out there somewhere, right? The Lord is my shepherd. He this, he that. And then it shifts from third person to second person. 
You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. Your goodness and love will follow me. There's an intimacy, an acknowledgement, an embracing, an accepting of God and God's love that transforms that psalm. And this is what Jesus is talking about. The ones who've left everything in Galilee and followed him have gone from a Jesus as a he to a Jesus as a you who means something to them, who's part of their lives, who fills them with hope. All of us are given invitations over and over in our lives to accept that God truly does love us and tend us as a blessed little sheep. We have that cute picture over on the lectern over there. Jesus snuggling that lamb. That's the love that each one of us has offered and we can embrace it and live it and follow that voice through those rocky parts of our lives or we could be like those Judeans in the portico of Solomon and push it away. The choice is always ours. I want to close Actually, before I close, I want to acknowledge something. This parish this week lost a really, really beloved member. And she used to sit in the choir. And I placed a flower on her chair today, remembering that there's somebody who should be there who isn't. Renee Lohman died suddenly this week. And... You don't expect that of someone in their early 60s. Her voice among us was just divine. And I can stand here and tell you what a beautiful singer she was and how much joy it brought to me, but it's not the same as you hearing it. And many of you can remember solos she has sung. Apparently last Sunday she sang one of those and Thank the Lord that we have these beautiful recordings on YouTube. We can go back and listen to Renee, but even that won't be the same as having been in her presence. It also reminds me that on Mother's Day, each of us has stories of complicated relationships with our mothers, but there are moments, too, that we can tell each other about our mothers who shared moments of tenderness and pride and joy in loving us. But in sharing those stories, it's not the same as being with your mother. That's my theme today. That's what Jesus is getting at. We can know something, but when we let that love in and we have an I and a you relationship with that person, it's very different, it's alive, and it's real, and it feeds us, and it feeds them. And that's what we're invited into. So now I want to close with these words from a famous preacher, Frederick Buechner, in a sermon that he titled, Message in the Stars. He said, it is not objective proof of God's existence that we want. But whether we use religious language for it or not, the experience of God's presence is what we truly desire. That is the miracle that we are really after. And that is also... I think, the miracle that we really get. I pray for each of us to know that miracle of God's loving presence, to say yes, to walk with our good shepherd, 
to follow his voice and be held in his arms. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please stand with me as we affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and us. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are found in your bulletin. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Gail and Alan, our bishops, for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For the Loman family. For the people of Ukraine and for all who care for refugees. Hear us, Lord. Donna. Your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For this community of prayer, we will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For Renee. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, please pray for the Inglis Anglica de Rwanda. And in our diocesan cycle of prayer, please pray for the parishes of the Concord River Deanery, St. Mark's Chapel, St. Mark's School, Southborough, St. Elizabeth's Church, Sudbury, St. Peter's Church, Weston, the Ministry of the Diocesan, and altar guild and all altar guilds. 
We offer to you, O Lord, all of the people on our prayer list, knowing that you are doing infinitely greater things for them than we can ask or pray for. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Hey, hi, Callias with a new baby. Yay! <laughs> Acadia's a big sister now. Yay! Um, next week, we're actually going to have a baptism here, so that's pretty exciting. I, it's a different family, though, <laughs> not the Callias. Um, so hopefully, you'll be here for the Nardinis. Um, little baby Noah is getting baptized, so that's great. Um, I enjoyed my week in Mexico with my husband, thanks to Dave Angelica, who covered the fort here. And um, I thank everybody for, you know, keeping the home fires burning. So it was really nice to just relax um, on the coast for a little bit. I mean, go from one cape to another cape, but whatever. Um, it's a pretty quiet week this week. Uh, we do have a funeral Saturday for David Jordan at four in the afternoon. It's on the calendar, but the tea party we had planned is bumped back a month into June, so we have a little more time to get organized. Um, those are my announcements. I think John wants to say a few things, too. Okay, I was going to save that. Um, another piece of news that happened this week uh, while I was away, is our um, parish administrator who has done a bang-up job for six years bringing this congregation uh, from the century of paper into the century of technology. Denise Frost um, turned in a two-week notice. She's going to move on to a job that is um, able to pay her family more what she's able to earn. Um, we are a small parish, and we couldn't give her more hours or more money, so <laughs> she's gone to a job that can, um, can uh, be appreciative of her incredible skills. So this will be her last week in the office. Um, I'm going to invite two things. I think Thursday morning is a thrift shop morning, and it's going to be a busy time anyway, so if you wanted to come in and say hello and goodbye, um, that would be a great time to do it. And if you wanted to make a donation for a farewell gift to her, um, it's common at churches to kind of gather everybody's um, offering and just give a purse of money for someone who's leaving the staff. So you're welcome to say goodbye, Denise, and uh, it's going to be hard. And if there are a lot of errors in the programs for a while, just, you know, be merciful. 
and uh, I do have someone who's offered to help with the newsletter, so that should be okay too. So we'll be all right. God is always good and finds us wonderful helpers on our staff. But please thank Denise. She's uh, been an amazing presence in this congregation, supporting so many ministries. As music director, uh, I got one of the shocks of my life on Thursday morning when um, Marilyn informed me of Renee's sudden passing. We as a choir, we're still processing this whole thing, uh, but onward and upward because we are planning to raise the roof off this place when we have a uh, memorial service for Renee. Uh, we're working with her wife, Sally, to make that happen. No date has been set yet because there's a lot of coordination that needs to be done. Uh, she has a large family back in Ohio and uh, Sally and I have been back and forth about music and whatnot, but uh, we've also invited her friends from the Cape Cod Chorale, of which she was a member at various times, to join our choir here. So uh, when that date is set, uh, I invite you all to partake in a very special celebration of uh, just a powerhouse of a human being. Thank you. Oh. On uh, the second Sunday of each month, we celebrate birthdays, and I would invite anyone with a May birthday to come up for a prayer. Yeah, we got some. Yay! I hear one coming. <laughs> Please join me, everyone. Of course. Oh, so tiny. I need a name. Ash. Ash. Welcome, Ash. Woo! Okay. Let's pray together. Watch over your servants, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up before all. And in their hearts, may peace that passes understanding, abide all the days of their life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Welcome to the world. Congratulations, Naomi. Is your birthday in May, too? No. <laughs> oh, baby Ash. God is good every day. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Okay, go get me those things over there. <laughs>
up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, <clears throat> and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. And may the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer and giver of life, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. ask you please to remain standing as we honor the people of Ukraine by listening to their national anthem.
Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.